Hi, my name is Dave, amateur radio call sign AB7E, and I've made several helical antennas for satellite work, L-band um, satellite frequencies. Uh, the Inmarsat satellites are around uh, 1.55 gigahertz. The GOES satellites, um, weather satellites are up around 1700 megahertz, 1 1.7 gigahertz. Um, here's one that I made that is very long. Um, all of my uh, helical antennas have worked, but typically I've used 3D printed spacers, disc spacers here, with slots in them that I then put these struts. And I've always, um, for all the ones I've made, I've cut these struts out of some kind of thin plastic. Uh, in this case, it's um, polycarbonate. Um, and it works, uh, but I've been hoping to come up with something that um, could be 3D printed, completely 3D printed for better accuracy, better repeatability, and just generally simpler. Uh, a lot of the, there, there are some 3D printed scaffolds out there uh, for L-band. They tend to suffer from the fact that they're all single, um, single element scaffolds which means that they've got uh, tall, skinny elements that turn out to be difficult to print, at least for 3D print for some people. Uh, tall, spindly things um, just have more um, risk for um, gumming up when you're trying to 3D print them. So I came up with this design. <clears throat> These are the spacers. This is the base spacer. And my, uh, I'll call them struts, have these uh, ridges in them. And my spacers have these little slots, horizontal slots. Uh, this being the vertical slot, small horizontal slot. And the way these go together is that this fits in there presses in and it's a pretty snug fit. So it holds really tight. Um, could be um, uh, super glued uh, to make it permanent. I've so far found that they work fine uh, just press fit in. Now the struts that I've made, um, if you, let me slide this over. If you look at these holes, you'll see that uh, they, that's where the wire feeds in for the coil, the helical coil. And this, the holes stagger up as the uh, coil gets wound in. These, hoil, these holes set the spacing for the wire. And you'll notice that there's actually two sets on each of these strips. Um, the outer ones are spaced for around 15, uh, 1.55 gigahertz for the Inmarsat satellites. And the inner ones are higher frequency. They're spaced for the GO satellites up around uh, 1700 megahertz. Um, now, another interesting facet of this design is that, and I have, I don't know if you can see, I've got an embossed number on the ends of the strips and if I put them in let's get this right if I put them in this way with number one being here number two going back here and number three over here, that will be right-hand circular polarization. The wire will wrap around this way. Now if I were to switch one and three here, I mean, excuse me, one and two, excuse me, one and three, this one and this one, if I switch those two, it's gonna look like this. One 
one will be over here. Did I get this right? Two will be there. And now we've got the coil, the, the helix, going up this way for left-hand polarization. So the same design can handle two different frequencies and either um, right-hand or left-hand polarization. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and assemble this, the rest of it, and put the coil of wire on it. I usually use a slotted form like this. This is just a piece of two inch ABS or maybe one and a half inch, I guess it's one and a half inch ABS. Um, and I wind the wire on it with this slot like that and I can just slide this off. And now I can take this, stretch it out a little bit. And just feed that onto the form, which I'll do here in a minute and I'll come back when I get that done. Okay, we're back. It literally took me less than five minutes to clip all the pieces together, snap them in place, and wind the, uh, the coil of wire onto the form. Um, I 3D printed these pieces um, with PETG uh, at a resolution of 0 0.2 millimeters. Uh, took about just over six hours, about six hours and nine minutes, something like that, to print all the pieces. Um, the bottom piece has holes for you to mount to your back plane, whatever you decide to use. Um, I typically use something like this, which is just um, single-sided copper clad board, and I have an SMA connector soldered on uh, this side for, the, um, for the, the ground portion of the terminal, and then there's a single pin here, which the uh, wire going to the center will solder to. Pretty much goes together like that. Now, this is a, let's count it, one, two, three, four, five, six turn helix. I think that's good for about 11 or 12 dBi gain. Um, and as I said, I've made, I've made uh, longer ones. Um, I have a, a 12 turn helical antenna up on the roof right now that I've made looks similar to this, but it wasn't all 3D printed. And that works great. I'm picking up Inmarsat just fine. Um, it takes about twice as long a uh, helical antenna to get 3D big gain. Um, so it is possible with this design, here's a, another section that I previously made. Um, doesn't have the same kind of base plate because the idea for this is that it would sit on top of here and you would rotate this around until you got the wires to match up at the right spacing and which isn't necessarily going to be when the uh, strips line up and I designed this hole, the size of this hole, to be just slightly larger than three-quarter inch um, PVC tubing so that you could take and feed this down through here like that, feed it on here, and provides two things. One is it's now a guide so you can rotate this, um, get it just where you want, and then solder those wires together 
Uh, it would be somewhere probably about uh, maybe about there. If I were to match those up somewhere along there. And if you leave the um, PVC tubing in place, it provides some additional rigidity for the longer uh, antenna. To be honest, I don't think that would be necessary. Um, this is really a stable, um, it's quite rigid. Certainly, um, once it was, if it was actually screwed down, it would be plenty rigid enough to hold its position. I mounted the helix to the back plane, soldered the wire to the center pin of the SMA connector, and I'm using a Nano VNA. It's the F version. It's a fairly recent um, model. It's pretty accurate. It's the V2. And if you can look carefully, you should be able to see that the SWR is quite low. I've got it scanning from 1.5 gigahertz to 1.9 gigahertz. And it looks like it kicks up uh, probably past 1.8 or so. Uh, other than that, it's below 2 to 1. These things are pretty broadband for uh, impedance. I can't really tell you what the uh, bandwidth is for gain. Uh, I don't really have a, uh, an independent way of uh, measuring the, uh, the, the gain response of this antenna. Uh, the problem being that anything I use to drive it or to receive from it is going to have its own gain profile and so I can't really um, have anything that's flat enough across this kind of a frequency range to do a good job of it. But my experience with other helical antennas like this has been that they work very well. Um, they are fairly broadband um, and they pretty much work out of the box uh, just as you as you build them. So I'll put the uh, STL files up on the Prusa Printables website if you have an interest in duplicating this. And if you do, I hope it works fine for you. Thanks for watching. Appreciate your patience. Take care.